What's going on, creators? Yeah, you know, just want to get on here and uh, bring everybody back to uh, now. <laughs> appreciate y'all being here and vibing with me for a bit. I also, you know, appreciate you guys' support. You know, the people that you know do that. Um, trying to get more mindful of like expressing that gratitude. You know, because part of part of that is in like in the past. Um, I, I didn't want to put out this impression of like um, you know pandering for you know doing this just for the sake of just cash and and support and stuff like that. And so I kind of shied away from that. But I also kind of recognize that I'm kind of being an asshole by you know if someone you know th throws some some cash my way and then I just like crickets from me. You know I do appreciate it and I do put it to good use. And so I, I do appreciate you guys for doing that. And uh, you know with that being said, you know I want to continue the discussion on mental diets because you know really we're, we're, we're continuously doing the same type of things in the present moment you know, you're either you know feeding yourself or, or you're starving yourself in a lot of different ways you're either remembering who you are and developing that kind of that practice of that or you're just kind of drifting into unconscious patterns and reliving the past over and over again you know and the thing about kind of staying present and, and recognizing these patterns that start to emerge um you know, there's an almost like a misconception, and I, I've kind of fallen into that where it's like constantly sitting, you know, s s uh, keeping the present moment in this state of just desiring, which is, you know, ultimately saying that, that you know, things aren't good now. You know, it's always got to be, oh, if I only had, you know, a better job, oh, if I only had things going this way, if only this happens, if only that happens, you know, and it's, it kind of just leaves you in this constant state of waiting and wanting, you know, and, and realizing more and more so that the faster you kind of start to look at your day to day as you know this is where you're at right now you know the concept of stewarding becomes really important because um, it's not so much about additional responsibilities and shit to move around in the 3d that's going to actually bring the joy and happiness and fulfillment it's kind of a kind of backwards from the way a lot of us have been taught you know where it's like at least in the united states where i'm from you know there's a big push on like materialism and and capitalism which in, in itself is a in is my opinion is a neutral it's kind of where it spins you is where it becomes an issue because with, with about everything you know um if you look at it with the right perspective, you know it can it can lead to awakening, to to uh, spiritual growth and development, to to growing some sort of a positive attribute, and and really getting into the the idea of you know I don't need to be in control of shit. You know God's in control. God's got the plan. I don't got to worry about it. I just need to show up when these things present themselves in the moment and kind of start using that inner guidance system to make the right moves. But like in the past, you know, where it's like you could look at any of these external triggers, and you know so much of it is like amplifiers you know so it's like if you're already kind of unconscious and kind of drifting into these states of maybe just extreme selfishness and, and not really considering others um you know more um external whatever it happens to be you know it can can kind of kind of amplify what's already there so if you're already unconscious you know more shit you know, it has a tendency to force more people deeper into the unconscious state. Whereas, you know, if you're if you're aware of that and you're able to be mindful and, you know, kind of disconnect sometimes from the story that we tell ourselves when something happens, um, you know, I, I have that kind of at the moment where it's like, you know, I just finished this me a big bathroom remodel job. You know, I, I have an employee that I got uh, to take care of, you know, and make sure that I'm providing jobs. And I want to make sure I provide good money to him and just so he could live and support himself and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like... Um, I'm kind of in this weird situation now because it's like that bathroom I ended up I didn't make anything off of it um, it all went to, to him you know but I, I was involved heavily in it so my time was really consumed with that which in the past when it was just me is not a big deal you know because I just you know kind of don't really care you know because I just ultimately trust that you know God's gonna provide it's all gonna work out and it's like you know everything's gonna be be fine you know but now it's kind of different it's more complexity you know added with an employee when it comes to okay well now now i'm down to uh i need to get these jobs i need to get some cash flow so i can pay him his, you know on friday you know type thing and yesterday you know didn't end up you know working and then today ended up getting rained out now so it's like there's a whole lot of stories going on inside of you know you know my being you know where it's like you can start to recognize you know it's like oh there's there's a fear thought, there's a worry, there's a concern, you know, but ultimately looking at that, not, and not believing it and start falling into that trap, but instead just realizing, you know, it's just part of the same game. God's going to provide, it's going to be fine. You know, um, yeah, I, I actually checked my email a little bit ago. I got paid for some music that I did um, last quarter. I got one of my publishers pays the fit, you know, basically every quarter. And this just happened to be the quarter that they paid. I just basically got, um, 
you know, paid what is going to go to my employee, basically, you know, and so we only were able to work about half a day and then get rained out. You might be hearing thunder and all that kind of stuff. You know, hopefully, I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, storms and, and all that kind of stuff. I think they're pretty intense, and uh, here in the Midwest, you know, there's kind of a looming threat about, like, tornadoes and shit like that, uh, which I feel like has turned into a real hair trigger on these tornado warnings. Where, like, in the past, when I was, like, a kid, and, like, the sirens going off in town, that's, like, you get into the fucking basement or you're, you're you know, in trouble, you know, because there's, there's something coming or, you know, it's like a real threat. You know, now they've gotten to the point where, like, oh, we see it on radar, 30,000 feet in the atmosphere, and um, there's, there's, a, there's spinning, and there's rotation, it's like... So it kind of loses its um, threat, I guess. I don't know. I, I feel like that, you know, in itself is kind of just more more media trying to get attention. But at the same time, everything is kind of an attention game anymore. Um, starting to uh, look at, like, all these social networks and shit. It's so funny to me. Like, so many people are, like, offended by, like, oh, you know, Facebook censoring, Twitter censoring, uh, you know, all these things are censoring. It's like... Who gives a fuck these places? You know, it's like, I remember when Yahoo was awesome to be on. Like, this is for, like, maybe, I guess, people in my age where they grew up kind of being online on the Internet. And it kind of follows the same pattern. You know, something, you know, first starts off and it's, like, awesome. You know, there's, there's like, cool people and you're able to connect. And then then it starts getting too big. And then all of a sudden... Like, I don't know, I don't see, like, like, perverts start, like, like, Yahoo chat, you know, turned into some, like, sexual predator fucking den, you know, but at, at, at one point, you know, it was a cool way to, like, just chat with people and stuff like that, AOL Instant Messenger, same thing, it was super popular at the time, MySpace, Napster, you know, all these different things that were really viral and hot, and, you know, so many people were starting to use it, but then it just starts getting too big. And then it just turns into drama. Then it just turns into, oh, then the politicians get on board because they see, oh, look at this, uh, you know, ability to reach all the minds of these people. And so let's get involved here. And then then it just turns into a shit show that nobody even appreciates being on air anymore. And then just stops going. You know, it's like, you know, if you talk to any younger person, you know, Facebook is already something antiquated to them. I mean, it's just something their parents get on at this point and yell and scream at at their computers. And it's like, "Ah, I'm not really interested in Facebook anymore. You know, so it's just... Just, you know, the ebb and flow of things. You know, take your power back. You don't got to use these services. I mean, I get on Twitter. I'm, I'm actually getting ready to move to, I think, Gab. Because I don't really get anything out of Twitter anymore. I mean, it's just, it's just some echo chamber where insane people just start shouting at the sky without reading anything. And they're just this herd mentality. I believe half the people are bots, you know. And, and, and the other half, you know, it's just... And I would say that would be 100%. But, I mean, it's like the good cross-section of people on, on uh, there that I just see mobbing up like this group thing it's just retarded and it's like i don't i don't need to who cares you know I'm, i feel like i'm getting shadow banned on there anyway so why am i going to keep using it i can't even tweet anything out without you know getting oh you know how many impressions oh it looks like 20 <laughs> it's like oh okay so thanks i love using your service i'm going to continue to use it even though i get nothing out of it and i'm ultimately being banned from there anyway so i think i'm going to start moving to gab i made an account there i might put it in the description if you guys like are kind of on the same page i'm also kind of like um looking towards maybe getting off youtube um and getting on a different platform for the same reason i feel like it's just just with the covid shit and all of this fascist kind of let's limit information I feel like there's obviously going to be something better, and these things have gotten too big to be able to be, you know, worth it to be on. You know, it's like, you know, I appreciate all the people that, you know, in like the metaphysics community, the spiritual community, and stuff that I've been able to connect with, you know, through YouTube. But, you know, also, you know, looking at, you know, what am I supporting and what am I not supporting? And it's like I can't continuously support business models I feel like are fascist dictatorships that, um that aren't worth my time and attention because everything is boiling down to attention. You know, the biggest business anymore is the attention game, which is, you know, something that's been going on for a long time, you know, because people that have, you know, really been into these things understand how valuable your attention is and your, and what you're thinking because it, it ultimately shapes your paradigm and you, you know, throw the authority to these external things as being uh, authoritative or, Oh, you know, you put these guys on a pedestal, but ultimately they're just, 
d dead things. <laughs> they're, they're just shadows. They don't really mean anything. You know, so I might continue to, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys know as things develop, you know, what, what the game plan is going to be. But, you know, definitely, you know, kind of getting off Twitter, especially, you know, Facebook. I don't even really get on that anymore, except for my handyman business, because it is, a, you know, a nice way, like some of the local groups to, like, promote business shit, you know, for the time being until, you know, it just turns, it's, it's almost just laughable. You know, it's like, you know, this idea you can't hear opposing thoughts on things. You know, it's just this weird, um, oh, well, you know, our, I'm the arbiter of truth, and unless you, you know, believe with this narrative, then I have to destroy it. It's like, fuck off. You know, I'm so sick of that kind of backwards mentality. And, like, um, you know, I don't need to feed it with my attention or my energy. And I, I recommend you guys can do what you want with it, but you know, this is kind of what I'm doing. But, like, uh, you know, kind of moving forward, um, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time just like in town doing shit in my local community, making making uh, I wouldn't even say necessarily friends, but you know, making acquaintances, you know, in in different positions, you know. So whatever you know comes around, I'm not really that concerned about it. I, I know there's a lot of fear and uh, you know stuff I hear you know from different people when it comes to getting the the uh, jabba dabba do, <laughs> you know. But like. Um, yeah, ultimately, you got to say no. And I just want to make sure to keep reminding people, you know, how important it is not to take kindness for weakness and to um, say no to people, especially when it violates your soul. You know, when, when, it, when, when something inside of you says, you know, don't don't just go along with this, you know, stand strong and, and have some self-respect enough to say no. Um, you know, in my local area, it's ridiculous how many places are hiring. So this illusion that um, there's not a bunch of jobs, maybe maybe in different areas of the country that might be real. It is definitely not real where I live, you know, and as somebody who has a business and, and you know, was trying to actively hire people, you know, as of a couple months ago before I got, you know, and before I got the team together, which... You know, down to one guy left on the team so but you know that guy's a superstar so you know that's it's all working out but like the thing of it is is um yeah it, it's the amount of people that aren't even filling out job applications is crazy let alone the idea that you know somebody that shows up every day puts forth effort and is making the owner money that um you know the whole thing is it, it, they're all, it, the whole thing in business at the moment is pandering to this illusion of the crowd that is I don't believe is real. You know, I, I think so much of it is bots and propaganda and fake um, actual shit. That a lot of these businesses that are going along with this this woke bullshit, they're just destroying themselves because they're not they're becoming tyrannical, forgetting about what is actually important, which is serving your customers, you know, and, you know, treating your empo employees with respect and dignity and not thinking that you're a dictator, which, you know, when, when you are in a position where you, you know, have created a business, it does, you know, lend to you having this weird kind of power dynamic, you know, which is like anything else for the, for ones that, mm, you know, are kind of unconscious to begin with that added power and that added kind of, you know, whatever over other people, you know, can, can almost drive you to be more unconscious because it, it's a fear thing. You know, it's like, well, you know, you have a fear of scarcity, like you won't be able to get the right people. Then, then, then all of a sudden now you got this fear that, oh, well, I'm going to lose half my customers if I don't go along with this program that, that seems to be so popular, you know, because you're afraid of being, being called a name or you're being, you know, this mentality of like, oh, I got to be the, the, the very top of the pyramid and just stand up there and just until somebody just claws you down and just drags you to the you know, bottom again. You know, when, when the reality is, it's like, really, what are you trying to accomplish? I mean, not everybody, you know, most like entrepreneurs and businesses and you know, locally owned businesses, very few of them are, are, are you know, getting more than a million dollars a year in revenue. You know, a lot of the shit, you know, where this, this is this constant like uh, chasing and chasing the wheel, you know, it's just, oh, we got to make the shareholders happy. Oh, we got to we got to do this. We got to increase profits. We got to increase profits. And it's like what I realized is the more I scaled up, the, the less money and more drama I started to get. Maybe, maybe it's just resistance, you know, but like I'm at this point kind of happy with just having um, the, the, the one employee. Um, it, it's a lot more peaceful. It's a lot more chill. And, you know, really taking, uh, feeling those kind of uh, kind of issues that are coming up of like, oh, you know, he's, he's doing a really good job now. I'm afraid I'm going to lose him, you know, after all of this, these months of like training and everything else. I'm just letting that also go. I've been really focusing on getting him to the point, um, 
where he can do his own business if he chooses to, you know, teaching him everything, you know, showing him, you know, how, you know, ultimately, you know, the more you have your faith that, you know, God's going to provide, you know, it just starts to mysteriously happen. You know, the customers, everything comes together. You know, and a lot of times you, you connect the dots looking backwards, you know, but when you're not sitting there constantly in a state of fear and worry and concern, you know, just in your mind telling yourself these stories about, oh, well, there's a recession. Oh, there's inflation. Oh, there's a pandemic. Oh, there's this and there's that. There's these stories from the media. Oh, we got the woke culture that you try to appease that, you know, and, and you start to really look at that as, represented it you know because i've seen that that kind of behavior not to lump everybody that's you know thinking that way into like oh this is bad and this is good you know but like seeing how this boundary pushing you know it's like not and it's people on both sides i mean this is balance everything is balanced you know so um i brought this up on a past stream because you know at the moment you know if you listen to the different media and cultural things happening you got you got this division this 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 false binary that is has exists it's constant you know it's constantly this narrative these these us versus them narratives whether it's race whether it's money whether it's gender any of these types of things these all these little camps that they try to put people in to fight with each other you know and then you see it again with the the vax versus the unvax the the uh, the woke versus the asleep the um it's, it's all a false binary you know but you know the, the trick is to stop falling for that but when you step back and you see okay well yeah the the vax crowd which who knows what percentage of the population that actually is you know and, and inside of that population and not to, you know some of my customers have gotten my, my family members have gotten this shit you know and so uh, not to sit there and bash anybody for what they've decided to do with their own body but you know there's a, a loud segment on either side you know it's like oh well you know i hope the people you know, because there's this illusion that if it's 100 percent compliance then we get our, our world back and we get our life back it's like what you had to begin with is an illusion you know it's like this has been going on you know this is not this didn't start two years ago or one year ago whenever this this two weeks to flatten the curve you know took effect you know it's it's like we're still in iraq and afghanistan we're still carrying this shit on from 20 years you know it's like you know and i know people are concerned about you know the end times and biblical prophecy and like, oh the mark of the beast and oh show me your papers and everything else but you know you know, as long as you're kind of focused on the present moment, your walk with God, and and really just living the life that God's gave you to live, and and you know, it's like if you got these desires in your heart to to do something specific, you know, go by all means, go ahead and go do that. But you know, when you start taking a step back though and getting out of the narrative of the world, um, you know, you have like maybe at the moment you have like the vaccinated narrative going well though the unvaxxed are the problem and they need to you know get 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 this shit and die well then then you have the people over here that are saying oh well you know it's it's the vax people they're having side effects and you know you know hopefully they get sick and die from the side effects and things will be better with them just gone and both sides are saying the same fucking thing you know which is you know everything is connected so having that mind either one of those mindsets from the left or the right both of those is violating a, a, a you know a tenet of unity and oneness because as you wish uh, maybe death on somebody else that is a that is a reflection of you on some level and what you're saying spiritually and metaphysically is you know you're calling death upon yourself you know by wishing it on others and so you know to really get into that you know you've really got to start um, you know taking taking your thoughts captive you know and start to be able to become an observer of these things so you're not just carried away and getting uh triggered and uh drifting into uh and and it's, it's a work in progress you know it's something you you practice and develop and um it's almost like golf you're playing the guitar i mean you just get better and better at it but it's like do you master it it's like you know after i think i've been playing guitar for 20 something years and it's like just last year i found you know i was i was only playing half the instrument it took me 20 years to realize that you know it's like because i was always you know kind of messing with you know rhythms and you know hitting a bunch of notes and shit you know, a lot of that has to do with like a perception of what makes you a, a good player. You know, it's like you're able to shred and just do all these crazy things, make these crazy sounds and everything. But as a producer, you know, somebody who's like um, does it like publishing, music publishing, um, you know, when you're playing the guitar, rhythm is really important to be able to uh, to create tracks that are specific for a genre. 
of music and so it's like you know um, like I have an exclusive publishing deal with uh, a guy's name is Phil he's, he's a really nice guy at Mibe uh, Music I get a lot of television placements f through his uh, publishing company and so definitely being you know, put out some good energy to him because you know as as you know he's as we succeed together you know he gets he gets like half I get half I mean this is a win-win so I de definitely want to just put some love energy to, to his business and what he's doing you know but like um, you know if he sends like a cue of like oh we need some like dramedy or we need some um, these weird labels but you know it's like if you're not able to play the guitar rhythmically you know to that style it's you're you're, you're just not going to be able to make something that can be synced and licensed you know and so but that realization of like oh you know um, silence you know playing with the silence in between the notes that, that was the realization that took 20 something years of guitar playing to, to finally be able to explore and so it's like you, you never stop learning you just come to different levels of understanding about things and you know not looking at the outside world when you, you come across these different people that um, you know, may be on a different level where you're at you know not to sit there and be envious and jealous you know but to, to look at what they have to bring you know because nobody hits your radar accidentally you know and, and so you know whatever's happening to you whatever you're experiencing you know start to look at it objectively and and, and kind of put yourself in the position of if this was you know if I'm seeing um, how, how would be the easiest way to say this you know it's like well you know would I want somebody to wish that upon me you know kind of get yourself in that zone it's, it, it's really easy with like the um, the the false binaries that are just constantly just getting more and more amplified because you have these these external situations that are either driving people to more levels of consciousness or unconsciousness which is between ultimately that's part of God's plan I mean that's it's not something you got to worry about what you got to worry about is you you know it's, it is it, you have to give an account sometime someday you know and, and it's not you can't point your finger to some external person like well Mike said this or you know Fauci said that or uh, Fox News said that or CNN said that and Biden said that and, and Obama said you know it's like you you have to take account for your actions what you, and that does include what you're thinking not just what you're doing you know because so many times you know you know i have people maybe uh, that are more religious i i, I experienced that where it, or it feels like people put on this front their smile and they'll you know try to put a, a good face forward but you know inwardly you can tell i mean the, there's there's like a judgy kind of like i'm superior to you and i'm helping you because i feel sorry for you like you're, you're like you're less than um, that kind of vibe, and I, I don't think people are consciously aware of doing that. But it's, it's those inner types of things. You know, Jesus made that pretty clear too. You know, it's like if you're if you're thinking and you know about like killing somebody, you might as well have done it because you're 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 mentally already there because it's the power of our consciousness. There's our thoughts. You know, it's like this inner um, you know this inner states that uh, you know you can start to to develop more and more. So and and it's like you actually don't have to do anything, and that's that's part of like the 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 old way of thinking, you know, of like, um, you know, having to toil and slave away to different things, you know, not saying to sit on the couch and just let things just magically appear, you know, that's not been my, ex my experience has been, you know, to, to take action, you know, but with that action, realizing that the action in the action, you know, it, it's ultimately God that brings it, but you know, he, you gotta meet him halfway, you know, it's like, um, it's, it's just like, uh, you know, like, like, making money with the business it's like if I didn't answer my phone or say yes I'll come out to come take a look at that I mean maybe if you have faith where that that doesn't matter that it could still happen I, you know, I don't take anything nothing's impossible as far as I'm concerned you know it's just um, you know whether or not you have a shitload of resistance you know whether or not it would work you know but like the the more that you're able to kind of play the same pattern over and over and over and over again where, where it's like oh um, I don't need to to Dude, I don't know. Maybe a good example is like, oh, you know, I got to make some money, so let me run a bunch of sales. Let me knock on some doors. Let me just physical, you know, force. I'm gonna just pound it out. And on some level, it does work to do that. But you know, from my experience of doing it that way, you know, it's it's more of a energy draining situation. There, there's a bunch of drama and resistance in that. There's a bunch of belief and separation that keeps getting amplified. You know, but like instead of looking at the things that are presenting in the moment as like seeds from the past that you can start changing now, 
and there might be a time delay till maybe tomorrow you start to see it or the next day or maybe the week but the more that you persist in the state of it's already good and you know um, get out of the state of like scarcity for example which is a very normal uh state of being and separation you know the things are scarce and there's not enough and that and that's in so many you know it's beyond just money i mean it'd be food scarcity uh employment scarcity um just not enoughness there's not enough love to go around there's not enough uh care to go around these kind of these stories we tell ourselves about shit you know it's like you know looking at those and start changing the story of well you know everything is abundant you know i am abundant you know you know, and because of that, you know, the things I desire in the abundant, they're coming to me already unless I put my big hands up and say, no, I don't want them and push them away through resisting, you know, but like, you know, becoming more and more um, in a gratitude mode about it that you don't got to keep struggling and everything, everything's going to work out perfectly. Everything is already worked out perfectly. You don't have to do it. God's already done it. So it's like that switching that, that, that mindset, of, I got to do, I got to do to, hey, you know what? Jesus already did it. The old you. Um, is is already gone you're new everything is new and then this new you know jesus already did the work the new kind of just receives it you know because by faith you just believed you know what what god said to believe you did it you know and you know part of like neville goddard's teaching about the the sabbath you know is you know kind of just resting in the the the, um in the, the state of it's already that way it's already done and and kind of viewing your reality from that already um already achieved goal you know so if like you know like for a lot of people that maybe want like um a lot of money or something like that you know you gotta really ask yourself first do you do you want why do you want it i mean for one do you want it just to feel free you know so uh you if 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 that's what you wanted you wanted to feel free you you would embody the state of already being free because it's only ever now you know so you start to you start to view your your situations whatever's popping off in the present moment and a lot of it's from the past that the that the old mind wants to reinterpret again and again the same way you know so where um maybe you know you know from my life for example you know so oh you know now we got rained out today well, the old mind would say, well, now that, that means I only have, you know, tomorrow, the next, you know, to, to be able to make enough money to be able to pay him, pay myself, and, you know, continue to float and, you know, to, to do all these things and start telling this story about scarcity versus, you know, a, a new way to look at that is, is like, I, it's all working out perfectly anyway. It's, it's meant to be that, you know, it's raining, everything's working out, it'll work out. God's already provided the, you know, through that unexpected means. Um, I don't get to worry about how it's going to play out. I only have to just be um, perceiving everything that's happening now from the perspective of being free and not having to worry about that. And with God send somebody for me to maybe talk to on the phone, do do a, a quote or any of these types of things, it'll all work out. Maybe maybe somebody listening will be like, oh, you know, let me support this guy. You know, maybe somebody's really abundant that's listening is just like, oh, here you go, a thousand bucks. Here you go no skin off my bag it feels good to give money <laughs> you know especially when you're wide awake and you know that what you give to others you're really giving to yourself and it comes back multiplied and like um you know but the thing of it is unless you actually are testing that for yourself it might sound like a scam you know to hear something like that you know but like um you know it's all about like kind of reinterpreting you know the egoic mind is just another way of just saying just the 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 um uh, the bundle of thoughts and programmings that you've had, you know, based on their experience, you know, you've, you've come up with an interpretation and you believe that interpretation. You believe, you know, you know, you know, the, the egoic mind thinks it knows everything about anything. You know, it's, it's like the, uh, it's like the, uh, the supercomputer. Oh, I know, I know what this means. I know exactly what this means. You know, it's like, cause I'm superior and you know, people that, you know, cause I'm so smart and you know, it's up on this pedestal, you know, you start recognizing these characteristics of the old kind of way of thinking and not to sit there and like bash it either. You know, it's like we all got trained in some way of thinking in that way, competitiveness and stuff like that. And I don't even really see anything wrong with being competitive. You know, it's the story you're telling yourself of like, Oh, if I don't win, I'll, you know, I die. <laughs> you know, that kind of like intense competitiveness, you know, music in itself is pretty competitive. And I, I've, um, yeah, you know, and part you know, over the past ten years of doing music professionally, you know, it's like I, I've got you know, 
there's so many asshole musicians and producers that are just so full of themselves and just oh they just yeah they just drive you nuts but then then you know there's this competitiveness too of like oh you know i got this placement oh i got this award i oh, i work with this guy i work with this person you know and there's this this drama and these stories that you tell you know, yeah and and like you see a lot of it like maybe reddit I, I got to a point with like the music people on reddit where it's like fuck off you know it's like i don't even you know care about you guys' opinion about anything you know and and that might be harsh you know but like um kind of lost my train of thought you know with that but i think it has to do with being competitive you know but like but now i look at you know maybe people that play the guitar that are better at one point you know i wanted to be oh you know the top on the top of the hill you know type thing it's like i'll be the next hendrix or whatever just just you know whatever and like like if i wasn't the best like locally you know it's like oh i want to be you know known as better than that person who's also really good you know and, and there's all these stories that you tell yourself with that you know but then you know, anymore it's just like i look at people that are better at like finger picking or you know, bluegrass any of these you know, cinematic any the type of thing I look at that with like producing too um you know that are better and that's not saying oh don't judge it. i mean come on you know it's like you, there's obviously a levels going on but you know looking at people that are at a higher level and not like being envious or jealous but you know realizing um they you can learn different things when you take off the the uh the bullshit you know it's like you, you you can see them you thank them for you know being able to show you inspire you uh and, and you just kind of look at things different i look at like a lot of musicians differently now too you know just um where i put a lot of that you know music people on pedestals you know now i i could care less you know i don't care you know what what what's going on with you <laughs> or how many albums you know have been sold or units pushed or any of that type of shit, I could care. I care so little, unless you want to like work, you know, do some sort of a collaborative thing. Um, but even that, I just, just I, the thrill, the thrill is just, it's just almost no different at this point than like painting a living room, <laughs> you know, for me. But like, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, uh, I think that's probably about it. You know, I appreciate your your patience and your and you know if you made it this far in the video and hopefully uh, you know, this little puzzle piece on some level has been helpful. Uh, and if not, you know, sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> and uh, you know, I appreciate you guys liking, sharing, subscribing, um, all the social networking things. And you know, if you if you got like maybe maybe a gab or um, maybe some good. You know, alternatives to YouTube or you know, Twitter or any of these type of thing where, where other people are going and there's just not this fascist um, oh unless you believe with our narrative um, we're just going to just censor you you know, you know put, put maybe a comment you know um, where it's at that people are kind of flocking to and, and see um, see enough of the same kind of thing um, yeah I'll probably join that and um, kind of get off some of these fascist platforms that, um, you know, maybe not YouTube at the moment, just because I feel like, um, I don't know. I, I, I just keep, I just keep hoping that, you know, they'll eventually just stop with, stop being evil. Google, <laughs> you said, don't be evil. You know, don't, don't violate your own little, little slogan, you know? And so, um, yeah, with that being said, uh, thanks again for listening everybody and have a good rest of your now and God bless.